This is Phil Greenwood from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. This is our next in our series of acquiring business financing sessions uh, as part of the Lean Finance series. And what we want to talk briefly about is this whole new thing, uh, crowdfunding, especially in light of the new legislation passed by our Congress. Crowdfunding, as a lot of you know, it's, it's people getting together, uh, going on a website, pooling their money, usually over the Internet, and saying somebody who has like a, uh, a film project they want to have financed, putting that information on the uh, Internet, and then people who are interested, you know, uh, deciding to, to donate or, or to invest money in it. I mean, this has gone through a, a, a large range of, of types of organizations and individuals, but now it's starting to actually get to the uh, startup company stage or early stage company that uh, is seeking money. Congress pa just recently passed the Jobs Act of 2012, um, and what they did is they made some changes for small businesses, early stage businesses, which made it easier for crowd financing, crowdfunding to take place. Namely, it affected how much money could be raised and also uh, the, the, the types of people who could invest and still allow companies to get around or to avoid some of the disclosure requirements required by the SEC. So the Jobs Act said that now companies can raise up to a million dollars a year or up to two million dollars a year if they provide audited financial statements. Um, in the past, when companies raised money uh, because of Reg D regulations, especially the private equity area, uh, they had to do a certain amount of disclosure and so on. Um, and or, or they had to acquire what we call accredited investors as as potential investors to avoid having to meet all those disclosure requirements. Now under the Jobs Act, in addition to how much money they can raise, uh, investors uh, who put money into the companies uh, that, that are seeking the million dollars a year, if they have incomes that are uh, or net worth below $100,000, they'll be restricted to putting up to 5% 5, 5 of their annual income, up to $2,000. Um, the cap for wealthy investors is 10% of their income or net worth to a maximum of 100000 So small business, you're going to have to be, uh, if you decide to go to the crowdfunding uh, way, crowd financing way, you're going to have to watch the limitations on how much money you're raising and also uh, how many investors that you can take on. Also, in addition, Congress, it used to be that if you had 500 or more investors, uh, you became a public corporation that now has been raised to 2000 Here's some of the crowdfunding sites. We won't go through all of them, but a lot of them that you know about, and there's more being added every day. Kickstarter is probably one of the best known. Crowd Tilt, Angel List, and so on. Uh, each one of these has are, are of different sizes and different locations and such. Um, and now they're starting to uh, have you know become part of the company raising money uh, scenario. A couple things to note, and I want to leave on this note, uh, crowd, crowdfunding is not for every business. My recommendation is that if you have to seek uh, ultimately more than a million dollars or even over a couple hundred thousand dollars, I would try to avoid this route and seek more of the traditional reg, regular F, regulation FD, private placement memoranda, private equity route. Things to, to note is that each state, uh, whatever state you reside in or headquartered in, there's going to be a certain amount of laws that you're going to have to watch out for. This may differ by state. Some states may have more laws than others, so watch the regulation. A second point that really can make crowdfunding more of a hassle is, you know, not many times you may not want 100 investors or 200 investors putting money in, especially if they only put in like $1,000 or $500. That's a lot of people that you have to administrate. So be cautious of the crowdfunding way and obtaining too many investors because that can take a lot of administrative time and be very costly. Third, and this is probably the one you're seeing most in the press, is what you're going to, there's going to be a real watchful eye on fraud taking place. Uh, anytime these new types of financing mechanisms develop and they're still kind of going through that regulation phase, trying to figure out what, what to do and what not to do, um, there's a potential for fraud. So be careful of that, especially investors where you put your money. This is probably the biggest reason I, I'm against crowdfunding. If, if you're a company that's going to seek a lot of uh, finance over the length of the business, the term of the life of the business, especially early on, um, people like super angels, sophisticated investors, and venture capitalists, private equity groups, they won't touch crowdfunding sites uh, or, or companies who have been founded, funded by crowdfunding. Um, anytime that a company has too many individual investors, that just creates a negative environment, makes it very hard to 
for, for venture capitalists and, and other super angels to be able to negotiate and have good control over their uh, over their investment. Just just the potential legal issues and such may preclude them from investing solely on that point. And finally, be careful about valuation. How you value uh, the crowdfunding, uh, not only at the time you're obtaining financing, but but uh, you know longer term. Um, People invest money over a website and they find out that their their stock price goes down over time or that they get 10 cents on the dollar back. Uh, they may not be happy with that. And of course, that opens yourself up to lawsuits. So sometimes just the fact of excluding and staying away from crowdfunding and still dealing with more sophisticated investors who are more demanding, um, that there can be some benefits to that.